Hello everyone, I'm Adam Anderson, product trainer at Maple Systems. In this training video series, we're going to give you a quick walkthrough of EB Pro, our HMI programming software, which can be used to create compelling and intuitive user interfaces to do protocol conversion on our HMIs and to control and automate your infrastructure. Using Maple Systems HMIs along with the EB Pro programming software, you can connect to anything in your facility and send data along to anything else. Let's take a look at EB Pro. When we first open it, we'll see a new project window. Here we're prompted to either create a new project or open an existing project. The first HMI that we see in the list that we can select from here is one of our basic HMIs, the 5040B. You can see a picture of it over here to the right. And further below, you can see some of the communication ports and other features that are available. If we scroll down in this list, we see a number of our advanced HMIs, and then we get to our Smart CMT series. The Smart CMT series HMIs are IIoT ready. And so you can see the pictures and information about these here. For this example, we're going to choose one of the advanced HMIs, the 5070DL. This is a 7-inch model. You can see the resolution listed here. And you can see that it is a dual Ethernet model. We see LAN 1 and LAN 2 listed there. Now that we've selected our HMI model, we can click OK. And this will create a new project for us. When we first create a new project, we are shown the System Parameter Settings window. From here, you can see the device type is listing that HMI model. And from these tabs, you can configure a variety of hardware and networking features for the HMI. You can also use the new device or server button here to connect to another controller or PLC. We'll take a look at this later. For now, we'll just click OK. And let's take a look at this interface that we've got here. In the center here, this is our window editing area. We have some sidebars to the left and right as well. If we look at the left hand side, this is our window tree. We can see that there's a new window that's been created for us automatically. This is window number 10. And down below we have tabs to switch to another sidebar. This is the address sidebar. And we can see which registers in the HMI are in use for a given type of address. So word or register type addresses. For example, local word zero. This one's not in use. Green indicates it's not in use. And if we switch to bit or discrete memory, we can see that none of the bits are in use at the moment. So we'll switch back over and go to our window tree. On the right side, we have a picture library showing. And we can look at pictures that can be added to our project screens and a shape library where we could select from various shapes that can also be added to our windows. From the toolbar at the top, if we look at the Home tab, here we can get back to the system parameter settings, for example. We have shortcuts to add a number of different types of objects to our windows here. We have tools to arrange and align our objects. We have font and formatting, and also state and language toolbars over here to the right. From the Project tab, we can do things like compile our project, download it to an HMI. We can add shapes or pictures to our libraries. We can create macros or functions. We can add tags to our local address library here. From the Object tab, we can add a variety of objects like pictures and shapes, bit lamps, toggle switches, numeric displays, ASCII or Unicode strings, can set up data transfers, and so on. From the data and history tab here, we can set up data sampling or data collection, configure events and alarms, set up recipes for batch operations. From the IIoT tab here, depending on the model that you've selected, you may have the option to configure MQTT or OPC UA. From the View tab, we can toggle some of our display options. We can show or hide different toolbars, and we can zoom or center the view on our windows. Finally, from the Tool tab here, we can get to a System Settings Editor 
where you can pre-configure the HMI hardware or network settings before you download a project. And we have other features here which we'll look at later on in the series. For now we'll go back and we'll start by adding a numeric display to our window first. So go to the object tab for this and select numeric and this new numeric object window pops up. Here we can select a read address. Local word would be the default, so this is register-based memory in the HMI. And we can enter a address here, so local word zero would be the first register that we can read data from using this numeric display. If we go to the format tab, we can see there is a data format option, so 16-bit unsigned is the default you could select from other formats like 32-bit float for example. You can set the number of digits left or right of decimal from this area and you can configure limits and scaling here which we'll look at in more detail later. For now we'll just go ahead and add this to our window so we'll click OK. We see an outline of the shape here to help us know where to place it and when we click it will appear on the window. So that's our numeric display object. If we look at the view tab Let's toggle some of these in the display area. So object address is the first one. If we uncheck that, then we see this red text disappear or reappear, LW0. So that's telling us local word zero is the address that this object is reading from. If we toggle object ID, we see it hides this ND0. That stands for numeric display. If we look in the window sidebar now too, we also see that ND0 and the address LW0. So that's all we need to be able to display a value that is numeric on the HMI itself. But what if we don't want to use this default name, local word? That's not very memorable. So let's go to the project tab and we can just set up a quick user defined tag here. So click on address and then user defined tags. Click new and here we'll select word for address mode. And we already have local word zero set there. Let's go ahead and name this. It's an integer so we'll go ahead and call it my int one. And you can select the data format that you, you would expect it to be here. So 16 bit unsigned is what we'll pick. And go ahead and click OK. Now we see this in our list of user-defined tags. So you can use these if you'd like. Click Exit and let's go ahead and double click on this numeric object one more time. We can get back to the Properties window and change the settings. Now for the read address we'd selected local word 0 but if we click on this settings button to the right we have more advanced settings for the read address that we can pick from. So let's check user-defined tag here. And now if we click on address type, we can scroll down and we can find our user defined tag that we just created. So let's click OK there. Now we've selected that my int one and click OK. And then we'll click OK one more time. And now we see that and that shows up both over the object itself in the object address. And over here in the window sidebar, it shows up too. It has the name of the tag and it has the associated register that we're using. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll look at adding a title for our window, changing the background color, and also adding a picture, like a logo, which you might want to do for your company. Stay tuned and check out the next episode.